Everybody, my name is Teacher Prashant, and I welcome you all to my video. This video is solving linear equations part four, and today we are going to be learning how to solve fractional equation, or as we can say, how to solve equations involving fraction. And we can see one right here. Let's focus on what exactly we are going to be learning today. Number one is going to be cross multiplication, which is backbone to solve fractional equations. This is a must know. Number two, we are actually going to be solving an equations with one fraction on either side of the equal to. So without any delay, let's get started. Let's learn cross multiplication. This is a very vital component of solving a fractional equations. So what is actually cross multiply? Before that, learn when can you cross multiply. You can cross multiply only when there are one fraction on either sides of the equal to which basically means two fractions in an equation, one on each side. Please keep that in mind. Two fractions in an equation means one on either sides. There we go. Now, let's write a fractional equation. So I'll take 4 over 2 equals, let's take 16, divided by 8. Okay, so what this says actually is if you multiply this 4 with this 8, it is going to be equal to this 2 multiplied by 16. Let's try this. So 4 times 8 equals 2 times 16. So 4 times 8 is going to be 32 and 2 times 16 is going to be 32. Wow, this law actually works and the answer is actually equal. So let's take another equation. Let's take 60 divide by 15 equals 44 divide by 11. Now the key note is this is gonna work only in case of equation which means if these fractions are not equal cross multiplication is not gonna work now let's learn this in details so let me write this as numerator 1 let me write this as numerator 2 let me write this as denominator 1 and this one as denominator 2 and they are equal now please keep in mind that this is only going to work if both fractions are equal. Cross multiplication will not work if these two fractions are not equal. Please keep that in mind. Now, so basically what this says is if n1 is multiplied by d2, which, which is 60 multiplied 11, it is going to be equal to d1 multiplied by n2. 2, which is 15 multiplied by 44. So let's check it. 60 times 11 equals 15 times 44. Now 60 times 11 is 660. 15 times 44 is 660 as well. So you see? If you multiply this 60 by this 11, it is going to be equal to the product of 15 and 44. That's what cross multiplication is. Simple as that. How can we use this in finding a value for x? So let's take an example. Let's take 2x over 2 equal 4. 4 we can also write 4x over 1. How can we find the value of this x? So we can multiply 2x times 1 and then 2 times 4 which gives out 2x times 1 equals 2 times 4 equals 2x equals 8 and x is gonna be 8 
divided by 2. x is going to be 4. So that's how we use cross multiplication in finding a value for x in linear fractional equations. This we have already learned. So if you guys don't know how to do this or if you guys don't know how to solve basic linear equations or, or linear equations involving brackets, I highly recommend that you watch my previous videos because the stronger your base is, the faster you find the value for x. All right, let's go jump to our question, right? So let me write this. Our question is 2x plus 1 divided by 3 equals x plus 4 divided by 2. Here we go. Let's do the same thing. So 2x plus 1 multiply 2 and 3 multiply x plus 4. So let's go write that. And if you guys are pissed off with my bad handwriting, I don't blame you. I do have a bad handwriting. All right, so let's multiply 2 times 2x plus 1 equal 3 times x plus 4. Okay, now if you guys don't know what a uh, distributive law in mathematics is, distributive law basically means that if two numbers or variables are added or subtracted together inside a bracket and if any operation like multiplication or division addition or subtraction is applied from outside the bracket must be applied to every element of the group must be applied to every member of the group so let's see one more time so two bracket basically means two times bracket Please keep in mind that two bracket, that if two and there's a bracket, this means two times the bracket. Now two times bracket, bracket means not just two x, bracket means two x plus one together. So if this two is to be multiplied with this bracket, it is going to be multiplied with two x and it is also going to be multiplied with 1. Right, so let's move further. So 2 times 2x is going to be 4x. And 2 times plus 1 is going to be plus 2. Equals, same thing. So 3 times x is going to be 3x. And 3 times 4 is going to be plus 12. Alright, so as we learned in our previous lessons, if you see something like this, what should you do? The first thing you should do is separate the like terms on either sides. Now we all know what is a like term because we already learned what is a like term. So 4x and 3x are going to be like terms and then 2 and 12 are going to be like terms. Why 4x and 3x are like terms? Because they have a common variable x and x. 2 and 12 are constants, that's why they're going to be two same terms. So let's just start with 3. Let's try to move 3x from the right hand side onto the left hand side. But please keep in mind 3x is positive. So when a positive value goes on the other side of the equal to, it changes into a negative value. So it's going to be minus 3x. Why minus 3x? Because on the right hand side, 3x was plus. When it comes on the left hand side, it has to change its value to minus 3x. Now the same thing we are going to be doing with this plus 2. Now when this plus 2 moves on other side of the equal to, it is going to change its value to minus 2. Alright, so let's write our simplification here. So finally we got 4x minus 3x equals 12 minus 2. Now what is 4x minus 3x? 4x minus 
3 x is x and 12 minus 2 is 10 so we got the value of x which is 10 so value of x is 10 now if you guys are wondering why 4x minus 3x is x let me explain you 4x basically is x plus x plus x plus x now minus 3x is actually 3 times minus x so th minus x minus x and minus x so plus minus gets cancelled same thing over here and over again what is remaining remaining is x so that's why 4x minus 3x is 1x or x same thing so let's go to this question 5x over 10 equal 2x plus 10 over 2 so as we can see we have one fraction so on either side of the equal to so we can basically cross multiply this equation so we can write 5x times 2 equals 10 multiplied by 2x plus 10 All right, so 5x times 2 is basically 10x equals 10 times 2x is going to be 20x and 10 times plus 10 is going to be 100. Now, identify the like terms and keep them one side. So let's bring this 20x to the left hand side of equal to so we can write 10x minus 20 why minus 20 because if a positive value from other side comes to this side of equal to it has to change its value to minus equals 100 now 10x minus 20x is minus 10x equals 100 okay minus 10 X equals 100 all right it's time to find the value for X so minus 10 X basically is minus 10 times X equals 100 so if we want to find the value for x we have to move everything but x on other side of the equal to so apart from x what we see minus 10 multiplied so let's send this minus 10 multiplied on other side of equal to keep in mind that when multiplication moves on other side of equal to it is gonna change its value to division all right, so when minus 10 multiplied comes from the left-hand side to the right-hand side of the equal to, it is going to change from multiplication to division because that's a law. When multiplication from other side comes to this side, it changes to division. When division from one side goes to other side, it changes to multiplication. Same thing applies with plus and minus. If plus goes on other side, it changes to minus. And if minus goes on other side, it changes to plus. So, when this minus 10 multiplied goes on other side of the equal to, which means from left hand side to the right hand side, from multiplication, it changes into division. So, we can write x equal 100 divided by minus 10. Now, please keep in mind that this is plus 100 divided by minus 10. You're not just dividing 100 by 10, you are also dividing plus by minus. So, let's write down the answer. Plus divided by minus is minus, and 100 divided by 10 is 10. So we got the value. Our x is minus 10. Simple. 
and easy. Uh, please hit like on this video only if you think it was helpful to you and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss anything. There's a lot coming in the future. Before I end this video, I just want to tell you the topic for my next video and that will be how to solve linear equations involving multiple fractions on one side of the equal to. Thank you so much for watching and a very goodbye from Teacher Prashant. I'll see you guys very soon.